Hi and welcome to The Running Channel. I'm Anna. And I'm Andy. And today we've got a bit of a different video for you. So usually when we talk about running on The Running Channel, it's mostly to do with the physical side of things. But today we're going to take a step back and think about the mental side of it. We'll be looking at the positive impact running can have on your mental health, as well as speaking to some incredible athletes about how they deal with the sometimes negative thoughts about their performance and training and how you can use their coping tools to help your own running. But before we dive in, if you're new to The Running Channel, please do hit subscribe and tap the bell icon to be notified when we upload new videos about running, which we do every week. So we know that running is a great remedy for mental health struggles. Countless studies have shown that it can be as effective as antidepressants in treating mild to moderate depression. And in fact, in some countries, including the UK, Australia and the Netherlands, medical professionals actually use exercise as a first line treatment for depression. So we're going to look at one aspect of our mental health and how it can affect our running. And that is self-doubt. Yeah, when our self-esteem is low, or even just if we're really tired, then we can struggle to deal with the challenges that life throws at us. That can be personality dependent because different people deal with different things in different ways. There might be people who put more pressure on themselves or more tendency towards having negative thoughts, as well as people who hold themselves to a really high standard and worry about meeting that standard, and also perceive that other people are holding them to a very high standard and worry about whether or not they're going to live up to that. And actually, I have my own experience as this as a, as a professional athlete, I really worried about what the rest of the world thought, about what total strangers thought about my performance, about me as a person. And actually I struggled more with worrying about what total strangers thought than I did with the people closest to me because I felt that with those people I could explain to them. They understood what I've been going through, they might have understood the nuances of my training or other struggles kind of off the track. But whereas I knew that other people, the, the public, the, the thousands of people watching on TV if I was at the, competing at the Olympics, they had no real insight into the, the four years of, of hard work that had gone into that moment. And you could have an off day, you could have a brilliant day, but you, you don't know until it happens. And you just have to have the confidence that you're going to deliver. And ultimately, that was something that I really struggled with. And, and, and I, that gave me a fair amount of anxiety, worrying about how people perceived me, whether they thought I was a good person, whether or not they thought I was a good athlete. Um, all of that was wrapped up in the same thing. And I guess I had one pretty effective way of dealing with that, as well as any of the other worries that I might have been kind of anxious about. And that was part of my bedtime routine, which involved no technology as well, so I wouldn't have looked at my phone close to bedtime. But then I made a list on old-fashioned pen and paper, um, a bulleted list of all of the things that I was worried about. And then one by one, I'd go through, rationalise, write down a reason as to why I shouldn't worry about those things. And once I'd rationalised that, I felt better about it and I would physically cross it out on my list, move on to the next point. And once I'd crossed out everything on my list, because there's always a rational way of seeing the things that are worrying you, I felt like I could turn off the light and go to sleep and not have all of those really sort of negative, disparaging thoughts come into my head, which are the things that ultimately caused me my own self-doubt. Thanks so much for sharing your story, Andy. I've been really surprised and inspired to find out that people who've achieved incredible things have felt just like me and just like you. And um, We've had a few of our friends from The Running Channel share their stories too from all across the sporting world. So let's have a look at those. Hiya, my name's Chris Akabusi. Um, in a previous life, world champion, European champion, British record holder, Olympic silver medalist, two bronzes. Yeah, what's it like to have self-doubt? Not to be sure of yourself. I felt that every single time I went to the line, I wondered, was I gonna be good enough? Could I step up to the plate? What am I doing here? Churning in the stomach. The way I got over that was understanding that I'm here by design and not default. I'd worked very hard. And actually the winning and the losing didn't really matter in the end. It's about the overcoming. The overcoming of myself. The overcoming of the statement that I'd made last week, last month, last year. To step in there with passion, pride and the kind of attitude. And to allow the evidence to speak for itself. My trigger word was Geronimo. Always was scared when they said tracksuit off, please. 
But then I resigned myself to the fact there's nothing else I could do. Just to climb into the blocks. To be in the here and now. And let whatever happens, happen. And there's nothing more glorious than springing into action. Allowing the flow to take over. And then just crossing the line. Hi, my name is Mary Kane. And one time that I experienced self-doubt was at the 2013 USA Championships. It was my not my first time competing on the um, professional level at USA's, but it was the first time that I was coming into the competition with an actual shot to not only place in the top three, but as a result qualify for my first world championship team. And I was only 17, so I remember being really, really nervous beforehand. The night before, I just couldn't sleep. Um, and as somebody who really loves to sleep, that was very stressful. And I just had all of these doubts in my head about whether or not I was going to be capable of doing it. And the morning of, I remember waking up and I feel like that kind of night of sleeplessness in a weird way put me at peace because I realized that it wasn't about whether or not I was capable of doing it. It was just whether or not I was gonna relax and give my, myself the best shot. Because on any given day, somebody could be feeling a little bit better, something can happen in the race, like you get tripped up. Um, and I just had to kind of accept that there were things that I couldn't control and just to control what I could. And for me, that was really what helped overcome that self-doubt in that race because I realized doubting wasn't going to help in any way. It was just going to hurt me by making me be more negative. Self-doubt is, is entirely natural and um, a good thing. I'd, I'd worry more about people who don't have self-doubt. I probably had my most self-doubt before um, 2018's UTMB where I put a lot of pressure on myself to do well um, and it was uh, stressing me out a bit and uh, you know I, I wondering if I could do well. Um, and I think the things I did was, partly I just took some time to relax and, and shut everything else off and just, just, you know, watched a film and read a book and just relaxed. And then I just reminded myself I was doing what I wanted to do. Like it was all my choice. Um, I wanted to do this race, I love running. Um, and I just thought if I just think about how much I enjoy being here, how much I enjoy running, um, you know, then, then whatever will happen, will happen really. I know I'm extremely fortunate to have never suffered from a serious mental illness, but as a runner, I definitely feel I've experienced those feelings of self-doubt from time to time. Even when I think back to being a schoolgirl and the feelings of almost feeling physically sick in the lead up to the race, feeling the pressure of what would people think of me if I didn't run well, and also all those pressures that I put upon myself. I also remember times near the start of my senior career where I was injured for months at a time and people doubting whether I'd ever get back to the sport again and me even feeling like oh perhaps I won't get back maybe I'm making the wrong decision here to keep trying but I kept focused kept trying and eventually I fortunately made it back to compete in my first Olympics but also just leading up to competitions I think we all have those feelings of oh will I be good enough has my training been good enough even warming up the legs sometimes feel dead and you think oh I just don't feel good today and on that start line just feeling a bit daunted about the whole prospect of the race but I think we all get that from time to time but I think really I've overcome that by for one thinking you know I'm going to enjoy this I've definitely achieved some of my better performances later in my career where I've learned to not stress about things I can't control, focus on the enjoyment of being part of the running community, whether things go well or not, and just thinking of the goals as being an opportunity, a challenge to try and achieve them. But I think we all need to learn to be kind to ourselves and you know, think we know we're going to give it our best, we're going to give it our best shot and that's all we can ask and we're very lucky to all be able to call ourselves runners. Most of the time when I go out and play, I have this fear of like, I'm never going to win this match, no matter who I play. And I've had that all my life. And I think in some ways that fear has driven me on to perform even better. You know, the fear of losing is a drive for me. Uh, but sometimes it gets a bit out of control. And I remember in the 2012 World Championships, um, I wasn't expected to do very well in it. And... Um, I managed to get through to the final and started to play really well and I remember I was 15, 10 up and into the final session and I was just starting to, uh, to work with Steve Peters and um, 
they knocked on my door and they said, you know, five minutes and then you're going out. And I was like, I can't go out, I can't go out. I couldn't face it. The pressure was so much, the fear that I was going to throw away a 15, 10 lead. What would, I, what, would it, what would I do? You know, how would I feel? How would I explain to everyone? Everyone would say, you're a bottler, you're a choker, you're this, you know, and all this sort of doubt just creeped into my mind. But, you know, um, I managed to get out there and play and, um, you know, and it's crazy really, you know, and once I'm out there playing, I'm fine. And I just think all, oh, even in the running, you know, the races, I'd get so worked up and, you know, but it's like anything, you know, once you cross that line and once you, you know, um, you're out there, you know, all them nerves seem to go, you know, so it's just, um, yeah, I'd, I'd just say just face your fears and just, you know, go out and have fun. Just enjoy it. I don't really mind self-doubt when I'm about to do a run. Um, I sort of get it the whole time. It's, it's, it's just as well uh, that I don't mind it. I mean, even even a park run with my son, Matthew, who's filming this, you probably didn't know this, Matthew, uh, but even a park run, I'm sort of racked with how fast are my legs going to be able to go today. The time I think that I had the most crippling self-doubt was on the start line of this very old, very long, very historic ultra marathon in Greece called the Spartathlon, which is um, which is brutally hard. And I looked around the room the night before in the briefing, and it's it's basically a who's who of of ultra runners. And I'm thinking, what the hell am I doing in this room? Yes, I'd, I'd qualified to get there, and that's not easy. But still, you know, half of the people here I know won't finish the race because it's that kind of tough. And you know, what makes me think that I, I even deserve to be sitting here, surely I should sort of vacate the seat and let someone more deserving have a crack at it. But you know that then that, that sort of, that awful hackneyed phrase, pressure is a privilege, it sort of is. Um, because if you are racked with self-doubt, and it was nearly paralyzing to me that, that night in Athens, um, it means that you're doing something that's outside your comfort zone. And if you don't get out your comfort zone, then you can't grow. And why do we run? We run to grow. We run to grow as people. We run to, to increase our fitness. So actually, if you think about it, self-doubt's okay. As a professional athlete, you know, the world outside looks at us and thinks, oh, they have it quite easy, they're full of confidence, they go out and they perform to the best ability all the time. But it's actually quite the opposite. You know, we're just human. We're just like all the rest of you. Um, we have a lot of self-doubt, especially when it comes to performance and even just in training. Um, I found it quite a bit over the last 12 months really, um, starting to get towards the end of my career, um, 42 in September, and there's a lot of doubt comes into your head. Am I too old now to be trying to do what I'm trying to do? Um, you know, am I too old to be competing against the girls that are 25, 26, 27, 28? They're a lot younger than me, they've got fresher legs than me. I've used various methods to get through that. Um, a lot of the time, if it's just training where I've had a bad session or a bad race, I'll just look back and remind myself of the good training and the good races that I've had and kind of the build-ups to those and they've not always went smoothly. It's often a case of, especially myself, I'm self-coach, so I don't have a coach to trash things through. But it's often a case of just speaking to other people and they can see it a bit more clear perspective and outside eye. I feel self-doubt in lots of different races. Uh, one in particular was Western States 100 last year. It was my first 100 miler. During the race, things got really tough and I was thinking, have I done enough training? Have I prepared well enough for this race? And what you've got to do at that time is just remember all of those hard sessions, those countless hours that you spent preparing for that race and really believe in yourself that you can do it. For me, before races, I like to have a why. Why am I doing this? And whether that's because I want to complete a challenge or I want to win a race, that why is so important and it's gotta be so specific to you and in that race. Hi, it's Emma Coburn. If I'm ever feeling self-doubt, I try and remember the workouts that I did to prepare for a race and the body of work that I've done to prepare. And that always makes me feel really confident and gets rid of any self-doubt. We hope this video has helped to show you that no one's immune to questioning themselves and to give you some ways to cope if you're ever experiencing self-doubt too. Have you ever had any experiences like this? How do you deal with them? We'd love to hear about them in the comments below. 
and if you are experiencing any mental health problems, we've linked to some support resources in the description below, so do check them out, you might find that they could help you. But most of all, the message from us is be kind to yourself, and we'll see you next time on The Running Channel. God bless, take care. Good luck to everyone out there. Hope you're all okay, and take care.